Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 198 of my Modded Vectorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to plan for green circuits. Enjoy. Getting pretty close to having gunships done here. And that's basically all of the uh, leftover research that's not a rabbit hole. So I'm thinking the next step we want to do from here is working on these electronic logic boards, green circuits, because you see they do go into some things, and we have been a little held back by that. We're also going to need tier 3 ore sorting, but that's more complicated, so I think uh, we should do the green circuits first, since they will be easier. And you see that they're kind of not here, that they're buried. All the way down here. And look at all the stuff that it goes into. You know when you see a, a thickness of lines that big, that you know that uh, it unlocks a lot of things. Like power armor, and you see that we could get the next tier of power armor without any other uh, resources, just these green circuits. That's kind of why I want to do the green circuits first, as opposed to tier 3 sorting. And it's kind of placed in a weird spot, but it also kind of makes sense. The new item we need to make is integrated electronics, which doesn't really require anything new. We make all these things, but the one interesting thing is insulated wire. We're not really making that in very large quantities, and the wire that we are making, we're just making from trees, which is super inefficient. We'd want to go down uh, the rubber path here, and we can do it chemically with styrene and butadine. Or we can grow it naturally with trees. You see it requires acetone and raw bio rubber. And we can get that bio rubber from desert trees. It's a slow process, but we'll check out both of them. I suppose I'll just uh, throw this research in here, since we're going to have the uh, option of this or doing it chemically, so we probably want to be able to compare the two, because it is relevant. And let's check out the different tiers here. The first tier requires uh, seedlings, wash sand and saline water to make those seeds. And then more wash sand and saline water to make the rubber. And we also get some trees out of it, which we can cut down into wood. The tier two requires fertilizer. And then here's where things start getting interesting. We need to add alienated fertilizer and alien plant life samples, which we do have a generator for. We can't make very much of it, but we do have a generator to make the trees. And then 100% of the tree can go into bio rubber and no wood left over. Which is kind of important because we're producing wood on demand. We do have an arboretum, tree growing farm, to make wood. But we don't really want to have an excess of wood. And then we'll have to find an excuse to burn it. And that's not really something you'd want to deal with. So this is definitely better, but slower. But we'll have to compare it with our options later. And actually with Blue Science, we can go straight down to uh, Tier 3 here. Which takes all those input requirements. And also requires some nitrogen gas, which is easy enough to create. We do get some tree out of it, but we also get a lot of bio rubber. So we get seven bio rubber and three trees compared to this one, which is four bio rubber and two trees. So it's a tiny bit better as far as uh, not having as much wood, but the problem is still there where you might have too much wood in the end of it, but we'll grab it because it's all relevant. We'll want to compare our options. So after that tangent, let's go back to electronics here. And when we have our rubber, we'll be able to make the insulated wire and all of those other things to make the chips. And then the boards are fairly similar to the white boards, just uh, requires a silver plate. And the fiberglass board, which is something we can make, we just haven't been making it because we haven't needed it for anything. So it's a glass product, just like the uh, sheets of glass. So we'll probably have to... Uh, do a little something to add this to the train network. It'd be a little annoying because they're not right next to each other, but we can make it work to give us our glass fibers. And then we add liquid resin to make that into fiberglass boards. And liquid resin is a plastic product. So we're going to have some uh, things juggling around here to make this happen. But we can do it, and that's the important thing. We just want to make sure we're not researching this when we can't do it otherwise. And then all the pieces go together. And like all the others, it uses all of the earlier tier components too. So we need some solder, and the basic electronics components, and the transistors, as well as the integrated electronics. And you notice that it's locked behind 
gold processing, which itself is a tier three ore sorting thing. And I'm not sure why it's here. If I recall the earlier version of this, like an earlier version of the mod, it required gold wire. And that's why it's here is because it needs gold. But I think that requirement was removed, but this is still where it is in the tech tree. So that's why it's kind of out of place. So perhaps a future update of the mod will change this and make it more reasonable of a location. But nonetheless, we are gonna have to research the ore sorting to get to that point. But I don't want to jump into the tier three ore sorting. We're just gonna do this research so we have access to the electronics. Uh, but nonetheless, we can do a quick discussion on uh, tier three here. It's a lot simpler than tier two, where you have these leaching plants and you take sapphire chunks and add some kind of acid to get sapphire crystals or any of the other crystals. And this is a dump for all of those acids. So we've been building up acids up until now, but this is a way to make it all disappear really fast. And then when you sort them, you get an additional two resources out of the uh, different crystals. And they start to overlap a little bit. So with sapphire, we get a nickel and a titanium. Jivalite will give us a zinc and a cobalt. Ceratite gives us a tin and a uranium. Curtinium is an aluminum and a titanium. Rubite is a silicon and a gold. And bomonium is a zinc and a gold. So that would create gold ore, titanium ore, uranium ore, and cobalt ore. So that's how we get access to those in very small quantities. But of course, there's other things you can research. That's the overview. We'll just uh, click it for now. And then because we did that, we can do gold. We don't need gold for anything. But the tier one, you just add chlorine gas to make gold ingots and then you smelt it that way. And gold wire is copper wire with some gold on top of it. So there's not much there. We'll need it, but at some point in the future, not now. And uh, the queue's filled up, but if we had one more spot, we'd be able to research this. So let's just uh, get that spot open. Research has been going pretty well. It seems um, pretty well balanced. There hasn't really been any hiccups. It's just uh, grinding through research. So that's good to see. We are very slowly working our way through all of that extra copper. So that's a thing. You can see that we have lots of copper still. And of course, all of this other stuff we got from tearing up the old bus. Um, I'm thinking when we rebuild slash upgrade to tier three ore sorting will be an excellent opportunity to put all this stuff on bots. So that's why I'm not too worried about it right now. And for here, well, we can just build with uh, what we have here and upgrade any machines that we can in our inventory. And then when we run out of stuff, well, then we can throw it on our bus here rather than put every single thing on here on the bus right now, because that'll take forever. I want to try to space it out. I get bored if I do the same thing too many times. I'm sure most people are the same way. So <laughs> when I've done one thing for too long in Factorio, I'm like, all right, we need a different thing to do now because I'm getting bored. Okay, we got a spot open and now we can research our electronics. So we'll just hit that and let that research go through. Now we kind of need a plan on where to put it. Because you see, this is our electronics bus right now. And in retrospect, it wasn't built as tightly as it could have been. Because you can see huge amount of space being left here just because of these single machines. For example, they could have been layered on top of each other and been pulling from one belt rather than two to take up a lot less space. So we have kind of uh, a choice here. Do we try to smash this bus down and make it smaller? Because as you see, it's butting up against these train stations. Or do we just extend it out this way and start pulling up stuff that's in the way and moving it? The train station would be annoying, but not that difficult to just pick up, put over here and just move the belts around. It starts getting a little more annoying when we start eating into this area from our uh, crystal processing here which we need for our modules. And there's also a, a third option, and it's uh, moving the bus, or I should say, diverting the bus, where we turn it 
up or down. Now, it can't really go anywhere if we go up or down, but if we do a 180, it can. Doing a 180 in this direction, although there's space, it's narrower than what it has access to now, so we probably don't want to do that. So what we probably do is go up, turn, and go this way. Now, the train tracks are in the way, but that would be easy enough just to kind of offset them up a little bit. So basically, we would have the bus take up this space right here, and then we would have twice as much space available to us. And we need to do some landfill, and it's kind of annoying seeing a bus do that, but... Uh, electronics buses are pretty long, especially when you're doing modules on them, too. So, we have a decision to make here. There is definitely a lot of room to compact this down. And I probably should have thought about that more when building these earlier components. But to compact one area means we'd have to compact everything and move it down. And that means, I mean, the bots can move these machines, but we would have to do all of this stitching over again. And that sounds terrifying <laughs> when it comes to doing the same thing too many times and getting bored. And another problem with rebuilding it is as our technology gets better, we're going to want to rebuild it again because we have access to better stuff. And that's kind of an important rut that you don't want to get stuck in is, oh, I have better modules. I can make this smaller and better and more efficient and faster and all that. You want to avoid that kind of thinking until you're at the end game and you've already researched everything because then you have the highest tier of materials. There's no higher to go. So whatever you build is basically perfect or can be as perfect as you want. In the mid game, nothing can be perfect because our technology is going to get better. So in that sense, we should probably just turn the bus. And we don't have much space here, but I think we will have enough because basically for it to work right, we're going to need to take every one of these belts and turn it into a super highway of belts and have them all like smooshed together going up here. And it still might not be enough space. We might have to move this, but we'll see. I would hope that would be enough space for a belt super highway here. Because if we don't want to have two sets of train stations, it's going to be kind of dumb, but we'd have a train station right here, adding resources, let's say gold, so that would come all the way down here, do the turn, come up here, and then get you somewhere up here. So that, that does seem kind of dumb, but it, it does make things simpler. And simpler is probably better. So, how many spaces do we have here? I think these are 10 wide. Yeah. And we have one, two, three, four, five. So we would need 50 spaces. And do we have it? Nope. I mean, close to it. Probably we could make it work if we do some really crazy stuff like belts jumping over things. Or we could just go further here and jump up. I do want it to be as clean as possible, so... We'll see what it looks like. And we'll just smash them in here as tightly as we can get because... It's kind of annoying you can't drag them when they're uh, like this unless there's a a key to make it work that way. And a lot of these are going to be empty because they're not currently being used. I'm just trying to reserve the space for the future. So when placing this, we want to try to keep them spaced out as neatly as possible here. So I'm going to do a one right there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we should have, yep, ten spaces wide. I think that's correct because we should have I think 42 here right yeah that'll just be a nice indicator for where each one of these starts and we don't know what we're going to need yet so let's add a new line not terribly sure how many we want to make considering we're only making 0.75 of the white circuits which I believe was a limitation of silver but we could certainly upgrade silver production, so this isn't a problem anymore. And uh, looking at our production, we can do two whole belts of silver if we need to. So we're getting 7.5, but we could get up to 60. We're fine on white circuits, so there's probably no reason to uh, upgrade it. But we might as well build this one to the maximum capacity. Let's just set it to 30. 
see what it looks like. These numbers are pretty big. Gets even bigger with productivity modules, but their resource requirements go down, and that's a lot of machines, so we're probably not going to be making this many. But we shall see here. Okay, then we need the integrated electronics. We'll do that in an electronics assembly machine, put the productivities in there. And there's some of that wire that's probably going to be made. Well, I was thinking we'd want to make it elsewhere, but maybe not, since it is wire, and wire is inefficient to put on a bus here. So let's uh, take care of these silicon wafers. Of course, productivities as always. So the silicon requirement is fairly small. So ferric acid, and then we have this wire. And we did need to decide what to do with it. Looks like it doesn't really require that much rubber. So then we have the important decision of how to make it. Well, we need the liquid rubber, which is tier two. And no productivities here. So efficiencies, I guess, since we only need the one machine. It's going very slowly, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then this rubber, where we can make it chemically or with trees. Well, let's check chemically first, which is usually the easy way. And, uh, yeah, it is pretty easy. Just requires one machine and a tiny bit of those two chemicals. Or, we grow it. So we'll have to come up with the acetone. And then we need the bio rubber. And we have the two choices between making it from trees, which we grow, or the desert trees the special version, which require the plant life samples and all of that. Oh, well, let's try growing them the normal way. You can see that uh, right off the bat, it doesn't really require that much. One arboretum. So the question is, do we want to go nuts making it so we can uh, do it efficiently by growing trees or just do it chemically? We'd also have to make this acetone which we have a limited ways of making it. Basically, we'd have to get it from nutrient pulp, which is another uh, annoyance. Well, considering these numbers are so small with chemicals, plus we're actually burning a lot because we're not actually mining any natural gas. We're mining some oil. And then we see here, we're just burning everything. So all of the uh, oil products or just being uh, deleted for a little bit of power. It's very little power, and I think the same thing is happening here. Yeah, we're going through this whole process. Okay, so we are getting a little bit of natural gas, but we're only doing it for the ethane. Where the methane and the butane are being burned. And why isn't this one running? I guess it is. I was just hovered on the wrong pipe here. Yeah, we're doing it for the methane. Ethane and butane are being burned away. So, it's not going to be very much gas, but we do have access to some. So it's probably worth seeing how much that'll end up being. Of course, uh, a problem would be is that it's not going to be perfectly reliable, because to produce one thing, we have to produce the others. So, it's not going to work perfectly. And we just did a bunch of research burning away all those extra resources. <laughs> so... It might take a while, so we might actually have to do both methods. But since we are just burning these products away, it seems pretty smart to try to at least save what we can. But let's go through that later when we know the uh, full scale of what we're going to need. Because these numbers might change on us. So we're also going to need the transistors. Chopped up from all of the relevant items here does make things simpler in a sense of where you have the coils and you just uh, chop up what you need. And we need the solder as well. And those resources look pretty good. So now we can go down to the next tier of the board. And that's all done. Just the board without the components on it. And uh, that's also going to be enormously large if we do it at this scale. And let's see, fiberglass boards, it's technically more efficient to send the glass fiber down on coils, 
but I don't think it's really going to be a limiting factor because it's really just one board into one circuit board, so I don't think we really need a ton of them. So we could probably just give them their own uh, item on the bus. And that looks like most of the items, because the numbers look pretty good. So now a big question is, how many of these do we actually want to make? Well, it depends on what they go into. And as it turns out, a lot of things, as you would expect. Considering their size, I don't think we want to go nuts with these. And honestly, doing the 7.5 of electronic boards seems to have worked pretty well up until now. So hopefully it's not a mistake to match the same number. But that's kind of what I want to do just because the quantity of machines. Oh, it's exactly a thousand. <laughs> yeah, 973 assembling machines. Compared to this setup, which is everything for the white circuits and the brown circuits only requires 270. And that's with a lot of lower tiered machines. So we want to make this number a little more realistic for our factory. So let's do 7.5, and the numbers are still huge. Just not as huge as they were. And it does create some interesting uh, numbers here. Because if you noticed, with our white circuits, we had to space them out because we were limited on our input of electronics components. We basically had a limit of one red belt for each. So that's why we had to do one here with uh, supporting machines on each side feeding in and then do the same thing because we're all limited on those belts. Well, with green circuits, that's actually not as much of a problem because at 7.5, we can just do one full belt for uh, each component here, at least the limiting factor, which is transistors. And it'll work fine. Now, transistors might need a couple of them, but actually, it doesn't look like it. It's just a long line of machines. So it seems like the biggest part of these electronics boards is basically just the machines that actually assemble the boards. And they are fairly small. Just to get an idea, how many are here? 38. Well, if we had like 500 of them, that gives you an idea <laughs> of what kind of cube we'd be looking at. But certainly, we can at least bump this up. Let's see, can this not use? Hey, this can use productivities as well. So those should be in there. Gotta make sure everything has all productivities. And actually, that's one other thing I think this is going to unlock for us is higher tiers of productivity modules. Is that correct? So we would need the productivity logic board, which requires module twos. And yeah, that requires the integrated electronics. And we'd have to take crystals to the next stage as well. But that's totally uh, something we could do. And it looks like we have all the research for. And uh, it does require Puffer eggshells, so we'll have to start uh, breeding puffers to make that happen, but we could, and that's another thing we'd probably want to do, is uh, get these higher tier of modules. So how far down could we go with uh, that there? Is it uh, down to tier 4? Could we do tier 5, or is that the next one? Yeah, that looks like that's probably the next one, although it's still the productivity logic board. It just requires the ruby, which I believe we could make. Then can we do six? No, I think that's the processor logic board. Yeah, which is the next one. So we can actually go from uh, productivity two to productivity five, which once we get down to the 20% minimum speed, it's just free productivity at that point. So yeah, we could go nuts and have huge increases in uh, productivity and just shrinking the size of the machines. So we don't have this anymore. And kind of the reason why I want to do that it's because this is our ore processing setup right now. And uh, it's basically taking up all of the space. I guess that's correct. It's just kind of weird how those icons are overlapping. But it looks like they are configured correctly there. 
we're going to have to have a third tier of ore processing up here. Then all of these ore sorting machines are going to have to be moved up to this space that we've left open for them. And expand it out a little bit. And we could do that, but that's a lot of stuff to move. We have bots, but still, that's a lot of work. But we built this at a time when we didn't have modules. So what if we had our productivity module fives, and then we could way shrink this stuff down. We'd have to scale it up a little bit. But, see these have no modules in them at all. And I don't know, do we have the next tier of uh, flotation cells here? We do have tier two, which we can make. So, with modules plus tier two, we could really shrink this down to maybe like a third of its original size and all of this stuff would be shrunk. So basically we would rebuild it with modules, shrink its size way down here, and hopefully, fingers crossed, there would be enough space in here that we could do tier three sorting and still have enough room for all of the belts where we can just put the ore sortings on the end here and not have to actually move them. <laughs> That's my goal here. That's what I'm trying for is to be able to upgrade this to tier three without actually having to move this stuff. We still might have to, but regardless, if we're gonna do a huge construction project with all of this stuff, we definitely want the best possible modules for our technology tier. And uh, those don't actually require the green boards, they just require the electronic components. So, I don't think we need to go nuts with this. I mean, it doesn't seem like we would. So let's scale this up to just maximize one red belt just for construction reasons. And it looks like 10.5 is the magic perfect number to make all this line up. And then we also have to ask ourselves, do we want any superior circuit boards for anything else? Well, they do go into stuff. Robot brains. So we'd absolutely want some extra ones. But that's basically it. And do we really make robots enough to where we'd want to make even more boards just for them? Probably not. I wonder if we're doing the same thing with white circuits. We might be. So perhaps we should try the same thing. Well, if that's the case, then all of these numbers line up pretty well. And I guess we would just need to work on the supporting components for the rest of the factory. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.